make some noise for your amazing host. Welcome back to the gallery. As you can see, one weekend isn't quite enough to see the entirety of the exhibits, so I'm glad to see you back to do some more exploring. By the way, you'll want to check out the gardens on the lower level, and they're definitely worth a visit. That being said, while you wander through the exhibits, we'll learn that wisdom is more than just knowing facts and that real wisdom comes from God. We've got plenty of other art pieces for you to take a look at. So make sure you've got your walking shoes on and let's head over to our exhibit curator, Mr. Coyote. Coming up, find out how you can be young and old at the same time. Stay tuned for more of The Gallery. Looks like we're checking out the art of story through paint. Before we check out that exhibit, let's take a look at the things you'll see before then. First, we'll watch a pre-show video, then we'll worship together, and then listen to today's Bible story. Before you head out on your tour, select the download button below this video to access your Get Real Guide. Inside, you will find a map of the gallery, some questions to think about, and other information to keep you growing in wisdom throughout the week. Before we move any further, let's check out this video. What is up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Mail Time. I'm here with my boy, Owen. How are you doing, Owen? Good. Yeah? How'd you get so tall today? I just grew so much. Yeah, I love that. Well guys, on Mail Time today, we are doing an out of state episode. We filmed this right here in California, but today our letters are coming from Texas, Idaho, South Carolina, and Tennessee right here on Mail Time. All right, so our first letter today is from Texas. Owen, have you been to Texas before? Like how many times? One time? All right, cool, I've been to Texas too. Now, Owen, this letter is very unique because we have a special drawing on here. Owen, who is this drawing of? Louis Letter. Yeah, it's Louis Letter. But the thing is, we don't even know who this came from. Owen, who do you think colored this picture of Louis Letter? I don't know. It's someone from Texas though. Whoever it was from, we are so excited that you sent us this letter. Our next letter comes from Nona and Aura and their parent, it's from South Carolina, and this is from their mom. It says, these two letters are from our daughters, Nona, who's six, and Aura Lee, who's five. They love watching Sandals Church Kids in Campobello, South Carolina. Blessings to all. Campobello. It sounds like a type of soup. So this first letter right here is from Nona, and it is a drawing of Mrs. Coyote, and she's next to a car. Well, Nona, I love your picture. And then our next letter is from Aura Lee. She's got an awesome Mickey Mouse postcard, and look at how big this letter is. We have a drawing of a pig, and I see a self-portrait right here, and a house, so awesome. And on the back, it says, Dear Sandals Church Kids, thanks for telling us about Jesus. Aura, Nona, you guys are so awesome, and thank you so much for sending letters all the way from South Carolina. So our next letter is from Idaho. Owen, have you been to Idaho? How many times? Oh, good, I was wondering if you knew that. Yeah, you have not been to Idaho yet. You know what, what is big in Idaho? Potatoes. <laughs> Do you like potatoes? Yeah. Yeah, with butter. So Olivia sent us an awesome letter and she actually colored the front of it herself. It's an underwater adventure right here. She's got a crab, she's got some rocks, and ooh, I love that she used her basic shapes to do her fish right here. It's a bunch of triangles. Let's see what Olivia has to say. It says, Dear Sandals Church Kids, hello from Idaho. It's awesome up here. On the back, you will see a portrait of my new fish, Neptune. Oh, that's her fish, her blue fish, Neptune. I love that. P.S. He is very grumpy unless he has food. Hey, same, Olivia. I mean, the name Neptune just sounds big. Oh, and show me how big like Neptune, Neptune will get. That's gonna be big. How big will the bowl need to be? The same size? Neptune, good luck. <laughs> and our last two letters are from Tennessee, from Reagan, who's 13 years old, and Olivia, who is 12 and three quarters, very specific. Now, Reagan and Olivia moved to Tennessee three years ago. I hope you guys are having so much fun. And Reagan drew an awesome picture of a cow and a monkey, and this is awesome. She says, I wanna see what a cow and a monkey look like crossed together. So we have our cow here and our monkey. Take a look. 
looks awesome. Yeah, it looks super awesome. And then she mixed them together to have like a monkey cow or a cow monkey. What would you call it? If you had to mix a cow and a monkey, what would you call it? I would call it a monk cow. A monk cow? That is awesome, Owen. And then our last letter is from Olivia. She drew a self-portrait. So let's take a look at what she looks like right here. I love this self-portrait. And thank you everybody who sent us letters in today. We love getting to read them. We love responding to your letters. And we can't wait to see what you come up with next. Bye. Bye. All right, artists, it's time to enter into a time of worship. Today we are talking about how real wisdom comes from God, and that means we can focus on the Bible. Follow me up to the Music History Exhibit where you can take a break from your tour today. It's important to remember that you are entering this exhibit with open hearts and readiness. You can follow along with the provided motions, clap your hands, or stand still. And if you need to take a moment to just prepare your heart for this, please do so now. And now, let's worship together. Dear enemy, you are just a part of the plan for the hope and the future I now have. Dear enemy, my God is the master creator. Everything is better in his hands. You meant to hurt me.
changing, never failing, you've never given up for me. We'll take the throne forever, all will bow and say, we will worship you forever young, forever free. So lift up a word, raise up a shout. Praise his holy name. Praise his name. Every heart, every tongue confess the glories of his righteousness. And praise his name. Praise his name. In the story gallery today, we're talking about Somebody Once Told Me from our story in Psalm 19, verse 1 through 11. While we wander through that exhibit, we'll learn that wisdom is more than just knowing facts and that real wisdom comes from God. As we examine this week's masterpiece, we'll see how real wisdom comes from God and that means we can be wise by focusing on the Bible. So grab your palette and paintbrush in three, two, one. Let's go ahead and keep moving on to the next collection. There's still a lot to see. Now, right here behind me, we have one of the most famous paintings of all time. It's called Starry Night and it was painted by Vincent Van Gogh. This painting was made in 1889 and is considered Van Gogh's magnum opus or his most important work. Now, I want you to take a second and observe this painting and then tell me what you notice. Do you notice the jagged rocks or all of the blues and the yellows and oranges or the way that the brush strokes make all the swirls on the painting? Great observations. I can tell you guys are really working on your critique skills that we've been talking about. Now it's said that Starry Night represents life being intense and chaotic like the sky in the painting, but it's also bright and hopeful just like the stars. Sometimes life feels a little bit intense, just like the sky in Starry Night. But did you know that God gives us something to help us have hope in our lives? Well, let's see what the Bible has to say. Last week, we talked about how King Solomon chose to ask God for wisdom to lead the Israelites instead of anything else. Then we saw how God blessed him by making him wiser than anyone else to ever live. Now, this week, we're going to jump back in time just a little and talk about King Solomon's dad. You might remember him from our inner working series. It's the famous King David. Now, God gave wisdom to King David and many other people in the Bible, too. Those wise people, including David and Solomon, used their wisdom to help God's people thousands of years ago and help God's people today. And that's us. And they did this by writing down poems and songs to help us connect with God. One of the places you can find these songs and poems is in the book of Psalms. Psalms is the longest book in the Bible and has wisdom poems and songs about everything from joy, celebration, to pain, confusion, and even anger. 
Psalms shows us how God is with us in our pain, but also helps us look forward with hope. Usually at this part of the tour, we would give you a summary of a story from the Bible. But because Psalms is songs and poems and not a story, we want you to hear them exactly how they are written. Go ahead, close your eyes and listen close. The heavens tell the glory of God and the skies announce what his hands have made. Day after day, they tell the story. Night after night, they tell it again. They have no speech or words. They don't make any sound to be heard, but their message goes out through all the world. It goes everywhere on earth. The sky is like a home for the sun. The sun comes out like a man from his bedroom. It rejoices like an athlete eager to run a race. The sun rises at one end of the sky and it follows its path to the other end. Nothing hides from its heat. The Lord's teachings are perfect. They give new strength. The Lord's rules can be trusted. They make plain people wise. The Lord's orders are right. They make people happy. The Lord's commands are pure. They light up the way. It is good to respect the Lord. That respect will last forever. The Lord's judgments are true. They are completely right. They are worth more than gold, even the purest gold. They are sweeter than honey, even the finest honey. They tell your servant what to do. Keeping them brings great reward. How cool is it that the Bible has a whole book full of poems and songs just like this one? One important thing about poems and songs like this is that they try to get you to use your imagination and your emotions to understand something. And sometimes that means that they describe things that are hard to understand by using something that you see every day. Like how at the beginning of this poem, King David talks about the sky to help us understand how amazing God is. Or later, how King David talks about how God's words in the Bible are sweeter than honey. He doesn't mean you should lick your Bible to see if it tastes good. He means that we should enjoy what God teaches in the Bible because it is good for us and will make us happy. And this poem is all about how God teaches us in the Bible what is right, what is true and good. It shows us that wisdom comes from the Bible and that means we should pay close attention to it. And that's why the one thing to remember is that real wisdom comes from God. Welcome back artists. Our next stop in the gallery is right here in the exhibition hall. Here is where we're gonna look at some of the most famous art of all time and how these works can remind us of how to be wise. So we just heard that real wisdom comes from God, but did you know that we get to have that wisdom too? We get that wisdom by reading the Bible. It reminds me of a type of art called ambiguous art. Now ambiguous means something that can have more than one meaning. Now, all of these pieces that I'm gonna show you today have more than one way of looking at them. Depending on what you're focusing on, you might see a different picture than someone else. Or if you change your focus, you might even be able to see both pictures yourself. These are some of the most famous ambiguous illustrations of all time. You ready? Okay, so this first one is called Ruben's Vase. It's from 1915 and you might see a vase or you might see two people looking at each other. Yeah, or you might see both. This next one's really cool. It's also from 1915 and it's by William Eli Hill. Who do you see? Do you see a woman? Now, is she young or is she old? Okay, if you look, the old woman's nose is the young woman's chin. Can you see her now? Now this next one is pretty cool. We don't know who actually made this one, but it's been around for over a hundred years. What can you see? Okay, shout it out. I heard, yes, some of you are seeing a duck and some of you are seeing a rabbit. So the duck's bill is the rabbit's ears and vice versa. So here are two more. This next one is by Giuseppe Ercomboldo. 
He painted it in 1590, and you actually have to turn it upside down to see the face in all of the fruit basket. That's pretty cool, you see the face? And this one is my favorite. It's another take on Ruben's vase, but there's an extra surprise in it. Can you actually see all three paintings? There's three different pictures going on in there. Now this painting is called Forever Always, and it's from 1943 by Octavio Ocampo. Now just like these paintings can look different depending on what you focus on, so can wisdom. Lots of people in the world think that wisdom can come from all kinds of different places. Some people think that politicians are wise and will do whatever they say. Some people think that celebrities are wise and will listen to them. Some people think that scientists or authors or news reporters are wise. Now all of these people may be smart and even wise sometimes, but God says that true wisdom comes from Him. That means we can find real wisdom in His Word, the Bible. So what does the Bible tell us about being wise? It says that true wisdom is following and respecting God more than anyone else. There is so much wisdom in the Bible that can help us in every part of our life, but we have to read it to learn how. That's why our action step for today is that we can be wise by focusing on the Bible. Hi guys, my name's Mitch and I love to build stuff. I wanna tell you about a time I was wise by focusing on what the Bible said instead of the world. So ever since I was a little kid, I've loved making things. Making stuff out of Legos, building blocks, and Lincoln Logs. And now, as an adult, I get to make stuff as my job. This is where this blowtorch comes in. I actually get to build things right here at Sandals Church. I built an arcade cabinet in one of our youth rooms. I've helped make a bunch of set pieces for Christmas. I've even helped design and build some of the sets you've seen here in Sandals Church Kids. Now, one of the things that's really important when building really big structures is making sure that they're safe. I'm responsible to make sure I've built everything secure and strong so that nobody gets hurt with the things that I've made. Sometimes that means spending extra time creating and planning, and it might even mean it costing more money to do so. I remember one time I was working on a project where we were making an awning. Now, if you don't know what an awning is, it's basically something that will give shade to an outdoor space. Now, you can imagine, if you're gonna be building something that's going over someone, you have to be extra sure that it won't fall. During this project, we decided to use materials that were a little cheaper to save money, and the structure ended up failing. Here is the actual piece that failed. And here is what it's supposed to look like. So as you can see, this got straightened very much. It's supposed to be a lot more curvy. Thankfully, nobody was hurt, but we had a choice to make as a team. Now we could either rebuild this awning the same way we did before, or we could build it even better with stronger materials that would definitely be safe. This is where listening to what the Bible says is so important. The Bible tells a story about how a foolish man built his house on the weak sand, but a wise man built his house on the rocks or a strong foundation that wouldn't fall. We needed to do the same thing with the awning. We ended up rebuilding the awning with better and stronger materials, and it turned out so great. So just like I chose to be wise by building something strong and safe, by listening to what the Bible says, you guys can be wise by focusing on the Bible too. Well, artists, we hope you enjoyed your tour of the gallery today. Our series memory verse is Proverbs 2, 6. Only the Lord gives wisdom. Knowledge and understanding come from Him. Today, we saw how the book of Psalms helps us to learn about wisdom through poetry and songs. That's why the one thing to remember is that real wisdom comes from God, and that means we can be wise by focusing on the Bible. You can live out the vision of being real with yourself, God, and others by opening up your Get Real Guide to the Now What. 
Grab some paper and a pencil and write a song or a poem. It can be all about the amazing things God is or you talking to God about how you're feeling right now. And be creative. It can be an acrostic, a haiku, a ditty, or an ode. Remember, some of the Bible's wisdom is in poem and song form. You can be wise by focusing on the Bible. You'll find that now what and more in your Get Real Guide. So don't forget to download it and follow us on Instagram at Sandals Kids. We look forward to seeing you next week at the gallery and I'll see you then.